So, as we all hope for a great British summer, today Nigel Havers is taking us on a tour of the best staycation hotspots. Great Britain is a wondrous place steeped in history and days gone by, with centuries of old tradition and unforgettable sporting achievements. And of course, some great British icons. If you wanna be my lover. In this series, I'm exploring some of Britain's truly best bits. From living like James Bond, the name's Bond, James Bond. I've always wanted to say that. To visiting some of our most iconic locations and discovering beautiful countryside in true vintage style. This is the best of Britain. Nice cup of tea. My journey starts in Cambridge, a spiritual home of mine. Now, my entire family went to college here, except for me. I was trying to be an actor. But as an out-of-work actor, I used to come stay with my brother in lodgings, and uh, I went to lectures, ate in hall, behaved like an undergraduate, and nobody knew that I was an imposter. <laughs> I couldn't do that today. But in those days, no security. Cambridge is, of course, an obvious place to start boasting, as it does, one of the world's most prestigious universities, an institution dating back more than 800 years. And the best way to take all this in is on the River Cam, in one of these, a punt. Scudamore's was the first company to offer punting trips in Cambridge and is now over 100 years old. The Wren Library is much newer than the college. It dates back to 1695. You can come here and see original folios by William Shakespeare. And you can, of course, see the greatest book ever written, Winnie the Pooh's up there as well. There are three iconic buildings in Cambridge, but this is probably the most iconic, King's College. The power of the building, just the pure power of architecture, stunning. So this is a bit of modernism. Some people hate that, but I'm, I'm a fan. I think it's good to have old with new. So coming up right ahead is the Bridge of Scythe. The bridge was, dates back to 1831. Henry Hutchinson built it. You know, I can't think of anything I'd rather do or anywhere I'd rather be than on a punt on the cam, on the backs, looking at the colleges. The stunning architecture is one of the many draws of the area. But did you know that Cambridge is also home to Britain's longest established racing car company, Lister? And it's now the only British racing car company to build cars using the same tools and mechanism as it did 60 years ago. British and fantastic. The factory only makes eight cars a year. Each one is handmade by a team of skilled workers. Don started working here as an apprentice over 20 years ago and knows everything about the most famous car, the Lister Nobly. The Lister Nobly was produced in 1958 as a racing car, purely as a racing car. They produced two works cars that were raced by Archie Scott Brown and the likes of Sterling Moss later on in, in the racing career. And why is it called a Nobly? It's called a knobbly due to the arches and the shape of the body. It's very curvaceous. It's a bit knobbly. <laughs> it is a bit knobbly. <laughs> is that because it's aerodynamically better? It was to allow the airflow over it to pin it to the road a bit more, I believe. Right, yes. yeah. What is it about this company that makes it so British? Right, every item on this car is made in Britain. Yes, that's every single fantastic. part. Fantastic. And uh, if I was to buy one, which I would love to have one, any chance of a bit of a deal, how much <laughs> would it set me back? It will set you back for a, a race car not a road going car, a race car, it starts at £375,000. If you want to spend a little bit more, you can go for a Sterling Moss Special Edition, <laughs> right? which sell at a million pound a car. Uh, but if I wanted one for my wife, could you have it in pink? You can have it in whatever colour you want. Great. <laughs> well, I think it's time to get my foot behind the wheel of this true British classic.
The Nobly's top speed is 181 miles an hour and can accelerate from 0 to 60 in just 4.3 seconds. It is fantastic. You know, I, I think I can safely say driving this car kind of suits me. I, I've got to have one. I really have got to have one. For my final stop, I've come to Grantchester and the Orchard Tea Rooms to enjoy none other than a true British custom, afternoon tea, in a spot where many Great Britons have come before me to study and read. I'm enjoying myself so much, I'm going to finish my book and finish my tea. Oh, that felt nice. I felt yeah. like I was there then. Yeah, I'd like to have been in that car. I know, that was beautiful, oh, wasn't it? Great it sounded car. gorgeous.